So today we're going to be looking at possible reasons why your exhaust might be blowing burned oil out the back of it. Nineteen ninety nine Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited four door four wheel drive four point seven liter V eight power tech. So there's several things that can be causing an engine to be burning oil. One PCV valve, which is over here. Uh, another thing that it could be is the piston rings, which is quite possibly the most severe and most difficult and most expensive thing to replace. Uh, the second most difficult thing would probably be the head gaskets, and the third most difficult thing would probably be the valve guide seals, and that should be just as simple as taking off the valve covers, compressing the springs with a compressor tool, and just checking or replacing the valve guide springs. So we've already replaced the head gaskets on this thing and it's still burning oil. So now we're going to try replacing the PCV valve. If that still doesn't stop it from burning oil, what I'm going to do is come down here and take off the exhaust manifolds. I'm going to run my finger along inside each one of the cylinders and see which one has oil in it. Now if they all have oil in it, it's possible that it's all the piston rings, it's possible that it's all valve seals. It could be any number of things, but I'm going to see if I can diagnose which cylinder specifically is having either the issue or the majority of the issues. So plain and simply, right here where your engine intake is, right down here next to it is where your PCV valve is. So the first thing we're going to want to do is try to break the seal. So now we come back down to our PCV valve. So fit the camera down here. The engine is still hot. I hate working on hot engines. Ow! Jesus! Now I do make these videos to teach you things, and one of the things if I haven't taught you already is always wear proper protection. Okay, so we've got this thing down. We've got it pointed in the down position over here. It should just be a matter of wiggling it out. We do have oil on it. The thing is bouncing around in there. I don't know if that means good or bad. I've been told by other people that it does mean bad if that is bouncing around, but from my understanding, if it's clogged, then it doesn't work properly. And it should be sending oil into your engine and it does look like it's wet on the inside and that might be our culprit of why it's burning oil. The oil should not go past this side and end up on this side. But it does look like we've got oil going all the way through, so might be a bad PCV valve. We replace this sucker and it stops burning oil. There you go. So just for the hell of it, I am going to check and make sure that it does have oil in it. It's supposed to have oil on this side, not on this side. I'm going to use a clean U-tip. And that does not look like it has very much oil on it at all, actually. That's concerning. So if it's not the PCV valve, then it's probably the valve guide seals or piston rings. And I'm really hoping it's not either one of those. So I've got my new PCV valve and I've got my old PCV valve. Basically, if you try to blow air in one way and it lets the air go through and try to blow the air in the other way and it stops it, then it should technically still be good. But we went and got a new one anyway, bouncing it around so that you hear that knocking on the inside. It does sound a little bit different. Of course, this one is newer and it does have a little bit more narrow of an inside diameter. So I don't know if that's going to affect it or not, but we'll put it in, check it out, and see if it still smokes. Now installing it's fairly simple. You just make sure you got this little plastic tab that's right here. You want to make sure that that goes into that little slot because it'll only go in one way you can't put it in this way you can't put it in this way you have to make sure it's put in that way you push it all the way in and then it'll start to turn and that little tab is what makes sure that it doesn't come back out 
And while I'm at it, I'm going to replace this hideous monstrosity with a brand new one. The reason I'm going to be going with an unpainted one, you want to make sure that it's all bare metal. Bare, uh, I think that's lead. Lead, zinc, I can't remember which exactly. It looks like lead. It's soft like lead, so... You don't want to get the ones that are painted. This one's painted black. You want to get the ones that are bare metal because that paint, even though it's on the outside, can actually affect the voltage. I've had that happen many times with my race truck, so I'm gonna make sure that I replace it with one that doesn't have any paint on it at all. So if it's good enough for racing, it's good enough for my daily driver. So, as you know, I'm trying to diagnose why this thing's burning oil. So, right here's the oil pan. I'm at the back of the engine looking forward, or the back of the vehicle looking forward. Right here is one of the oxygen sensors. I've already taken that out and scrubbed it down with a wire brush. Trying to figure out if maybe it was so dirty that it's been causing the check engine light to come on and maybe... I was really hoping that I'd be able to find an oxygen sensor on the driver's side manifold and on the passenger side one. I haven't been able to locate one. Uh, so I have to rely on the one that is before the catalytic converter and this one here that is after. And I've taken them both off and scrubbed them off and everything, and I can't really tell which one's more dirty. I don't know which side of the engine's having the problem or anything. It looks to me there is an oil leak down here. Yeah. Down here on the driver's side of the engine, the majority of the oil is coming down on the driver's side, and I have pretty much a dry engine on the passenger side over there. So I'm thinking that maybe... The oil is coming down and getting into the exhaust and then getting burned off and then you're seeing the burned exhaust coming out the back so that naturally makes you assume that there's something going on inside the engine so i'm really hoping that it's not the uh, valve guide seals or piston rings and i for damn sure don't want it to be you know a crack inside the engine somewhere like maybe one of the sleeves might be cracked inside the cylinder wall and i don't have one of those little cameras to stick in there to be able to try to diagnose that. Right. So for the time being, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pressure wash the underside of this Jeep, get rid of all this grease and grime and dirt and all this other stuff and see if maybe, hopefully that oil that's down on the driver's side of the engine is just caused from uh, when they did the head gasket and they just didn't clean off the engine. So hopefully that'll take care of it. Um, if not, then I've got an even bigger issue that I'm going to have to address. Now for the record, for these oxygen sensors I had to use a 22 millimeter. And this one was rusted on so it was very difficult to get off so you're gonna have to put some elbow grease into it. So I want to try to diagnose all of these smaller problems first. PCV valve, you know, that only costs us five bucks at AutoZone. Um, if it's not that, you know, head gasket's a real tedious process, and it's not, it doesn't take very much to uh, just pull the spark plugs out and look down in there. It looks like those are our injectors, so I don't know where the spark plugs where the spark plugs are at. They're probably down there at the bottom. Uh, I really have no idea because I'm not familiar with these engines, but uh, you can look online for that information real easily. What I would do is, if you had one of those little cameras, I'd take each one of the spark plugs out and I'd run that little camera in there and see if I can see any cracks in the cylinder walls. Uh, if you see any cracks, then when your piston ring is going up and down, that oil is able to stay in those cracks and flow its way into the, uh, into the cylinder as you're burning it. So, Again, that's on the more severe side, head gasket on the more severe side. Uh, piston rings, again, more severe side. Easier stuff, PCV valve, cheap and easy fix. It's right on top of the engine, not difficult at all. Um, the On this particular truck, we actually have on the underside, we've got some oil somewhere on the driver's side of this engine that is dripping down. Passenger side is clean. Driver's side's got oil on it. Now, I don't know if that was done during the head gasket exchange or if they if there's some kind of a leak somewhere and we're just dripping oil down. But the potential exists that that 
that oil leak is somehow finding its way into the exhaust because, you know, your exhaust tube, it's metal, it rusts, and eventually it gets little holes in it. So the oil can find its way into the exhaust, then you're blowing, you're blowing burned oil out the back and that makes you think there's a problem inside the engine when there might not actually be one. So before you go the long route of replacing head gaskets and piston rings and and everything else, you know, it's it's the easier fix to do the PCV valve, look for an oil leak, try to find possible uh, explanations as to why it's leaking, and probably the next step after that, if, if none of those fixes it, then you probably get one of those little cameras, little LCD display, and stick it down in each one of your cylinders. Have somebody just crank the starter over a little bit, let the cylinders move up and down so you can see when it's when the, when the uh, piston's all the way down, you're able to look at the entire cylinder wall. So if they all check out, then I'd move on to bad piston rings or I'd move on to uh, head gaskets or something at that point. But this is where we're at with it now. Um, I don't have one of those little cameras, otherwise I would do that and I'd show you how to do it in this video, but I don't. So hopefully this points you in the right direction and I hope it has been educational for you. So now that I'm all done with my repairs, I see that the check engine light isn't on anymore. So it looks like scraping off the uh, oxygen sensors with a wire brush did the trick. But that's not going to last forever if the engine's still blowing burned oil out the exhaust. So I still need to uh, diagnose and fix why it's doing that.